NASA is making history tonight with what's being described as a touch-and-go landing on an asteroid. The OSIRIS-REx spacecraft successfully landed on the surface of an asteroid as tall as the Empire State Building, spinning like a top. The craft collected a sample in about 5 to 10 seconds and is now heading back more than 200 million miles to Earth, arriving here in 2023. The aim of the mission is to provide more information about our solar system and see how we can prevent an asteroid like it from hitting our planet. And from an asteroid in outer space, we bring you back here with a glimpse of the future. The push to attract more young Latinos into the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, where they are largely underrepresented. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez with more on this mission. Police, you and your team, uh, good luck and Godspeed. Thanks, John. Now to have a crew discovery. Thanks to everyone who helped prepare for this mission. Start. You feel the general vibrations of the three engines coming to life. And then the two solid rocket boosters about a second later turn on. Now the noise level goes up in order of magnitude and the vibrations become more violent, like a big earthquake. Uh, when you think the whole thing's gonna fall apart, you blast off. It is an unparalleled thrill and an accomplishment few other Latinos have achieved. Jose Hernandez, a first-generation Mexican-American. We were hand-in-hand uh, hand with my parents out there picking the uh, fruits and vegetables uh, to help with family income. Going from farm worker to astronaut. Inspired as a 10-year-old boy watching the Apollo 17 moon landing. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. And man, I was hooked. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. I said, that's what I want to be when I grow up. And now inspiring other young Latinos to follow in his footsteps. Though Latinos make up nearly 20% of this country, only 7% of the science, technology, engineering, and math workforce is Latino. Organizations like OLA, the Hispanic Outreach Leadership Alliance, are working to change that. Um, STEM careers are the way of the future, and in order to be competitive and build a diverse future STEM workforce, young people need to see that it's possible and that these jobs are for them too. A part of spreading that message is sharing stories of others in STEM fields, like engineer Lou Ver Walker Hannon. I'm a big believer in the term representation matters. It is important to educate black and brown students in the STEM fields. And Ellen Ochoa, the first Hispanic woman to go to space and now the chair of the National Science Board, who faced countless challenges. I did run into people who tried to discourage me. Uh, it was clear that I just didn't fit their picture of who becomes an engineer or a scientist. Ochoa is now changing that picture and charting a path for the next generation of Latinos in STEM fields, like high school junior India Carranza. She's an inspiration. She advocates for fair opportunities for all women in the STEM field. Each day she inspires me to reach for the stars, just like she said. Now seeing their own potential in the faces of these trailblazers. When I have the chance to reach out to young Latinas um, and talk about STEM fields, uh, so the first thing I want to say is we need you. We need your minds. We need your creativity, your way of looking at the world, your welfare of your loved ones and your communities. And those are all things that will be really important for um, both succeeding in STEM and, and helping us solve problems. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.